Good morning, guys. Today is uh, Thursday, May 11th, and uh, I want to talk this morning about that disgusting spectacle on CNN last night, this event they had with Donald Trump at a town hall style meeting at uh, St. Anselm's College in uh, Manchester, New Hampshire. There are some important things I want to get to. To me, the, the, the most important things that I was interested in were his comments about the ongoing criminal investigations of him. And I'm going to get to those in a minute. Let me just discuss um, a little bit about this, uh, like I said, a disgusting spectacle before we get to it. This man is getting worse, if anything. Even after six to seven years of having this psychopath on the scene, I am still amazed. I, I still have to take a step back and kind of really take in and look at what we're dealing with here, that this place that we've come to in this country, this unhinged madman, lunatic psychopath is honestly the most re popular Republican in the country, the runaway favorite right now to be the, the nominee for president. And if he were to get the Republican nomination, just because of that fact alone, um, he has actually has a decent chance of being elected president again. What the hell is wrong with this country? Um, I think obviously the problem is the Republican Party. It's, it's only they who support this lunatic. But by and large, I mean, 90 some odd percent of them still do. Um, and so that's the problem. And I'm going to talk about this in a little bit about how it is really a Republican voter problem. This is not really a Trump problem. This is a Republican voter problem. If these were decent people, then we wouldn't have a problem here. Donald Trump would have no support. The problem is Republican voters. So we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, but one thing that, that irks me, it's always irked me. It, it pisses me off now more than it's ever it ever has, but this has always bothered me. And that is this idea that we call presidents president forever. Okay, Donald Trump is not president anymore. Why the hell are we constantly referring to him as President Trump or Mr. President? You know, I'm watching this town hall last night and, and this Caitlin Collins, she just keeps calling him President Trump and Mr. President. He's not the fucking president anymore. He was the president. He's not the president. We have one president. This has always bothered me because whether it's president or senator or congressman or judge, we call these people by their titles, the, their, their government titles for the rest of their damn lives, long after they've left office. You know, you sit on the bench for four years. We call you judge for the rest of your life. It's ridiculous. You know, you served a term or two in Senate. We call you senator from the rest, for the rest of your life or governor and, and certainly president. What bothers me is because it, it goes against what this country is. This country was envisioned to be governed by citizen legislators, citizen public servants. You know, they, they serve for a time, then they leave, and then they go back to being just a regular citizen. But to me, calling them, and I know for most people, they're thinking, Mark, this is just picky and stuff. Why, why are you uh, getting so mad about such something that's not important? I think it is important because I think it, it says something about the way we view these people. They're, supposed, they're, they're no different than us. They're just citizens who get elected. They serve for a period of time. Then, be, then they become just citizens again. That's why this whole, all this talk about, you know, impeach, uh, convicting, indicting Donald Trump, charging him with crime. Oh my God, this is, this is so unprecedented. You know, do we really take this step? Do we really want to be that kind of country? What? The kind of country that holds people accountable, that treats everybody equal before the law? You mean that kind of country? Yeah, we want to be that kind of country or don't we? Or, or, or are you saying we should be the kind of country where we put these elected politicians above everyone else and we shouldn't hold them accountable for their crimes? Pisses me off. Same way that we call them by their 
titles, their government titles for the rest of their lives. To me, it sounds like a, a title of nobility, you know, like a duke or a duchess or a prince or a king. We don't do that here. You know, we left that behind a long time ago. So, But we've adopted these new titles of nobility for ourselves. So Donald Trump is president for the rest of his life? No, he's not president. So it just pisses me off. And it, and it gives him, you know, it, it adds to his credibility and his legitimacy to keep calling him president. It just pisses me off. It really does. And, and, and especially with this guy, because he doesn't deserve. If anyone didn't deserve to be called, to continue to be called president after they left office, it's this detestable piece of shit. Now, um, enough about that for right now. Let me get into what I think, for me, are the things that I was most interested in. Um a lot of people are still obsessed with the horse race political aspect of the whole Trump thing, right? As I told you in the last video, I, I think we should hold off on that and wait and see if Donald Trump is indicted and for what and see how that changes the landscape. Um, if he is indicted the way I expect him to be indicted, these are going to be massive, serious, earth-shaking kind of indictments, and I think it will completely change things. Um, but we, we certainly can't really take a proper accounting of what's going on politically speaking until we see what those indictments are, if they come. So I think all of this, um, prognostications about Donald Trump's, you know, he's going to win. Oh, he's up 70% in the polls over Ron DeSantis. And I'll, let's wait and see if he's indicted and then let's talk about it. So I, I'm, I'm not all that interested in that kind of stuff. I'm interested in getting this piece of shit prosecuted. And it's 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 what he said about the ongoing criminal investigations last night that are the most interesting to me. Now, I didn't watch this whole thing. And frankly, I forgot about it. I was flipping through the channels and, and I probably saw about half, the second half of it. So I didn't see the whole thing. I didn't go back and try to watch it either. So there's there's stuff I missed. I don't know if he was asked at all about the uh, January 6 investigations. Um but I did hear some questions about the Georgia investigation and the stolen document, the Mar-a-Lago stolen documents investigation. Now, what's interesting to me is that it is obvious that this man is, is panicked. He is absolutely panicked, and he should be, because he has serious criminal liability here. As for the Georgia thing, he was asked about it, and of course his he he seems to think that if he can put out a narrative that that suffices as a criminal defense, that it will work for him as a legal defense in a court of law. Um, he's He thinks his public relations, his political responses are going to carry some kind of legal weight. The guy's a moron, but so far it's worked for him. And um, with respect to the Georgia investigation, his entire defense seems to be that it was a perfect phone call. And he was just calling because he had questions about the fairness of the election. You know, he thought it was a rigged election and he was just calling about that. And, you know, if I can't call about a rigged election, then, then what does this country come to or, or something along those lines? Um, as for that, to that phone call, clearly the idea that it's perfect is, is nonsense, but the evidence in this case goes far beyond a phone call. And I've tried to tell people this from the very beginning when this phone call first surfaced. There's going to be a lot more than just this freaking phone call. And I said the same thing with respect to the first impeachment because that was initially over a phone call. And um, I don't want to get into this right now, but that first impeachment was handled very, very poorly. They rushed it through. Uh, they could have done a much better, more thorough presentation of, of, of Donald Trump's crimes there if they had gone about it differently. But whatever, that's done and gone. But I had said at the time with respect to that phone call that there's going to be a lot more than just that phone call. There's all the prep work that went into a phone call. The president of the United States doesn't just call the president of any other country and just start shooting from the hip. There's preparations, there's conversations back and forth between lower level people setting up the phone. There's a whole bunch of other stuff. Same too with this um, phone call in Georgia. You know, Trump's conversation with Raffensperger, with Raffensperger, whatever the hell his name is, um, was just one tiny aspect of all of this. Trump's people were talking to their people. 
Trump's people were on the ground doing all kinds of other stuff. That's why Rudy Giuliani is in big trouble. Mark Meadows is in big trouble and a bunch of others. It's not just this phone call. So Donald Trump saying it's a f- perfect phone call. Um, that's not going to get you anywhere, but it will. It's enough for the idiot base of the Republican Party who doesn't know what the fuck's going on with respect to that investigation. Anyway, they clearly they, they have no clue. So um, his handling of, of that issue and the way he did it, I mean, the, the way he did it is just so panic sounding as it should be. And by the way, I don't really believe that Donald Trump wants to be president. He doesn't care about doing the job of president. He wants to be president for two reasons. The first is because the ego. He wants to be president for the, the you know, satisfying his massive ego. But more importantly, um, especially this time around, and, and the reason why he tried so desperately to cling to power, which led to January 6th, is because he is scared to death of going to prison. And that's why he desperately wants the protections of the office again. He's scared to death of going to prison. He was scared to death of going to prison um, you know, before January 6th after he lost the election. And that's why he tried so desperately to cling to power is because he was worried about going to prison. Now, remember, there were other cases, too. The Manhattan DA, we all thought that he was going to be indicted on serious financial crimes related to mortgage fraud, insurance fraud, banking fraud, tax fraud, all this kind of stuff. You know, the, 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 pre, the previous Manhattan DA had fought to get his tax records and everything all the way up to the Supreme Court twice, one, both times. And Donald Trump was facing the prospect of being indicted for those crimes. He got off the hook because Alvin Bragg was you know, a coward on those things and went for this easier sort of not as serious hush money arrangement. Anyways, Donald Trump was scared to death of going to prison. He's scared to death of going to prison now. He doesn't give a, he doesn't care about doing the job of president. He doesn't care about any of these issues. None of them. He doesn't care about any of it. So he's not running for president because he wants to do anything. He's running for president for his ego and to try to stay out of prison. And he is Desperate, and his desperation was on display uh, last night. Now, the most interesting point for me was the stolen document stuff. Now, his, his what seems to be his strategy for mounting a legal defense. Again, he thinks that these these political responses to these investigations are going to suffice as a legal defense in court. Ridiculous, but he has two main um, defenses that he, he that he keeps saying over and over and over. Last night was not the first time. He's done this many, many times. But with respect to those stolen documents, he keeps citing the Presidential Records Act. And it, he doesn't go into it. He just says, it was, it, it's, the, it's called the Presidential Records Act. I had a right to have this stuff. We were negotiating. It's the Presidential Records Act. He seems to, he, he seems to be saying that the Presidential Records Act gives him permission to have these records because it's called the Presidential Records Act. The Presidential Records Act says the exact opposite of what he's telling his idiot cult that it says. It doesn't give him permission to to, to have these records. It specifically says that he's not allowed to have these records. That's the entire reason they passed the Presidential Records Act because what happened before that was presidents, some of them, would take government records as their own and not give them back. And so Congress passed a law making it clear, these records do not belong to you. They're not, they're not your personal records. Any records made in course of your presidency belong to the American people. They're not your personal records. Anything related to the job of of president are presidential records, i.e., They belong to the American people. They're governmental records. They're not your personal records. And you are required to turn them over to the National Archives. That is the purpose of the Presidential Records Act. It literally says the exact opposite of what Donald Trump says. Okay, It tells presidents, you must turn them over. They're not yours. You don't get to negotiate to keep them. You don't get to take them and then negotiate returning over some of them. As Donald Trump is telling his cult. No, the exact opposite. You return them all. Um, Of course, and of course he tries to, 
equate it to the Biden situation and the Mike Pence situation. Those two situations are entirely different. Both of those men, once they discovered that they had some classified documents or government records, they alerted the FBI and said, hey, we've come across this. I have these governmental records. We need to go about getting them returned to the government. Both Pence and Biden did that. The government didn't even know they had those records until those men told the government that they had them and and wanted to uh, make arrangements for turning those back over. Donald Trump was the exact opposite. Donald Trump never told anyone he had them. When the National Archives came inquiring about what he had, he lied to them. He stonewalled. They they realized that, okay, he does have certain records. They demanded them back. He refused. They went and got a subpoena. You know, they turned it over to the FBI. The FBI served a subpoena on him. He lied to them, obstructed them. Um, that's what this whole thing is about. Completely different. But he wants to equate the Biden and the Pence thing. Um, oh, and then the other thing. Oh, by the way, just equating that, that's not going to get you anywhere. You're not even going to be able to raise that at a criminal trial, by the way. He's not even going to be able to say, well, what about Biden and what about Pence? This is the thing. Most people don't understand. You're not lawyer. You know, people who aren't lawyers don't really understand this. But you can't just say whatever you want in court as a criminal defendant. There are rules of evidence. And the number one rule of evidence is only relevant evidence is allowed. Okay. Only evidence that is relevant to whether or not you are guilty of the crime charged. Whatever Biden did, whatever Mike Pence did, is completely irrelevant to whether you did something illegal. So he's not even able to, to raise that. If I were the, the prosecutors here, I would file a motion in limine before trial saying, Judge, I want a ruling before trial saying that Donald Trump and his lawyers are not allowed to mention anything about Mike Pence uh, or Joe Biden and their retention of records unless they first get a, a ruling from the bench. They shouldn't even be allowed, and they wouldn't with a, with a, a, a competent jury, uh, a competent judge presiding over the trial because the, the rules of evidence don't allow irrelevant evidence in. And that's what this is. Uh, anyway, the next thing was, um, oh, yeah, he was asked by Caitlin Collins, um, did you show classified documents to anyone? And his was his response was, not really. Not really. Did you show classified documents to anyone? Not really. And then she followed up with him on that. What do you mean, not really? So did you show them or not? And he said, well, no, I, I, I don't know. I can't. I don't recall showing them to anyone. But if I did, I had the right to. I had the right to show these are my records. I could show them to whoever I want. I had the right to show those records. It's called the Presidential Records Act. And then he went into his whole, um, you know, I can declassify stuff just by thinking about it. Garbage. Um, so he seems to think that this is going to help him in, in court to be able to say, yeah, I, 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 oh, and by the way, the fact that he said, not really. And I don't remember if I showed classified documents to anybody, and but if I did, I had the right to. Okay, translation there, yes, he did show classified documents to people. That's an admission. That is as clear an admission from Donald Trump as, as if he had said, yes, I did. Okay, in, in Trump speak, that was an absolute admission. And so now we know for sure, yes, he did show classified documents to people. The question is, um, does the government have evidence to prove that he did? We know he did. Do we have the evidence to prove it? And I sure as hell hope we do. And the fact that he said this leads me to think that he he thinks that they have evidence to show that. Um, okay. Anyway, um, one final point, because I've already gone way long here. And I alluded to this at the top. This is not a we don't have a Trump problem. We have a Republican voter problem. As I said, this man is absolutely a deranged lunatic. He is clearly unfit for office. I mean, no one no one would hire him to do anything. You wouldn't he would certainly never be hired to be CEO of a company. You, you would not hire this man to be to do anything. He is a lunatic. He is a nut. No one would hire him for anything, but we're going to maybe make him president again. The only reason we have this problem is because the Republican Party 
the voters, your rank and file, the, the people who live across the street from you who vote, who, who will vote for this man, who support this man. Those, those are the problems. That is the problem. Because there are tens of millions of those people. Those people are the problem. If those people were decent people, as I say, if they cared about the country, if they weren't mindless members of a cult, we wouldn't have a problem. Decent people would not support this man. And we are long past the point where we can say, oh, well, they're good people. You know, they're smart people. They love our country. We just have a difference of opinion. No, no, no. In normal times, yes. This is not normal times, okay? This is so fundamentally different than any other political situation in the past. We are long past the, the point to say, yeah, Trump supporters, they're decent people. They're just, you know, mistakenly supporting this man. No, you're not a decent person. At this point, you should know his narcissism, his psychopathy, his indecency. The man was just found liable for sexually assaulting a woman for crying out loud. Okay, what else do you need to know? No, at this point, if you support this man, the problem is you. You are a deeply flawed, deeply disturbed, deeply sick person yourself. Okay, there's something seriously wrong with you. But Trump support. And so anyways, keep bouncing all over the place. My mind's all over the place. The point is, it's a Republican voter problem. If, if we did not have, if they weren't who they were, who they are, Donald Trump would not be an issue. We wouldn't have to worry about Donald Trump. He would have no support. He'd be in prison already, if we're going to be honest. He certainly wouldn't be running for president, and he would have no support if he did. So it's a Republican voter problem. But what explains them? Why are they the way they are? And I think, you know, I might talk about this more in, in, in another video. You can't, you cannot explain these people by politics. It's not an adherence to certain issues or philosophies or anything like that. The only way you can understand today's Republican voters and their allegiance to Donald Trump is not through politics. It's through psychology. It's a psychological problem with it. This is a mass psychological problem. And there's a whole bunch of reasons for it. I'm not a psychological expert, um, but some of the things are obvious. Um, and, I, and maybe I'll do a video on that, but one chief among them at this point is people's inability to admit that they were wrong. And the more adamant they were in support of, of a position or a person, the more strongly they were in favor of that person, the more difficult it is for them to admit that they were wrong about that. And a lot, a lot of Trump supporters can be explained by that alone. They will never, they can't, they're too invested in Donald Trump. And if they were to admit these things about Donald Trump, they would be admitting these things about themselves and how wrong they were. So they can't allow for, for an admission that they were wrong. So they will never admit that they were wrong. And how they go about defending themselves is to defend Donald Trump. So th their own personal credibility is tied into Donald Trump. They have to defend them to defend themselves. That's where we are with a lot of these people. But there's a lot of other psychological issues at play here, cult dynamics and, and, and all this kind of stuff. As I say, I'm not an expert in that, that sort of thing, but some of it's pretty obvious. Maybe we'll talk about that later. Anyways, those were my takeaways. I think it was a disgusting spectacle, and I'm kind of torn about it. Because, you know, on the one hand, it is absolutely disgusting for CNN, CNN to give Donald Trump a platform like this. It was essentially, it was essentially an infomercial, you know, to, for Donald Trump to spread his lies for free um, and largely completely unchallenged. I mean, she, Caitlin Collins, she did better than a lot of people would have done, but she's not up to the task. Um, and I don't know that any single person could be up to the task to, 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 to fact check on the spot and push back against a nonstop torrent of lies. And, and that man lies as he breathes. Nearly every word that comes out of his mouth is a lie. And about his lies, 
one more before I go. Keep I keep like saying I'm gonna go and then I keep going. Um, Donald Trump has less respect for his own voters than pretty much anyone else. He must think that these people are absolute morons, which of course they are, but he must also believe that they're absolute morons. The way that he lies to them, the brazenness of the lies. Like, for example, again, on the Mar-a-Lago stolen records case, he tells them that he is allowed to have them because of the Presidential Records Act. It's called the, it's called the Presidential Records Act. Where did he learn this stupid... Who talks like... Um, anyway. He just he just repeats like a parrot. It's the Presidential Records Act. I'm allowed to keep these Presidential Records Act. He knows it doesn't matter what he says to these people, no matter how ludicrous. Because the Presidential Records Act, as I said, literally says the exact opposite of what he's telling these people. It says. Now, if anybody, any of these morons, just Googled it and read it, they would see... Uh, he's lying to us. It says the exact opposite. It says he's not allowed to keep these records. They're not his. But he goes out there and says, I can keep these records. They're mine because of the Presidential Records Act. He literally quotes a source that says the exact opposite of what he's telling them. How stupid must you think your voters are to lie to them so brazenly and to, to cite a source that would prove that you're lying if they bothered to check it out? I mean, he could just say, I'm allowed to keep these. But instead, he cites a source that he says gives him permission to have these things that make them his. But that source says the exact opposite. That is a seriously brazen lie. How stupid must you think your own voters are to cite a source that proves you're lying as proof that you're not lying? It's mind-blowing. Unfortunately, he's right about them. They really are that stupid. But he must believe that they're that stupid anyway i will keep uh, going on and on and on if i don't cut this off i'm sure i'll have more to say about this um it was a disgusting oh my 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 two minds of this i'm torn about it on the one hand it it, it sort of legitimized his lies gave him a free pe- platform to spread those lies but on the other hand here's the problem if donald trump is not in front of people we've seen this for years it's been a consistent pattern when he is not on TV lying and being a a psychopath, his poll numbers go up. People tend to forget or it fades in their memory what a psychopath he is. And so his poll numbers rise when he's in front of people acting like an unhinged lunatic like this, his poll numbers go down. And it's like, if the people are going to make an informed decision, shouldn't they see what a psycho he is? If not, they'll kind of not, you know, some of them won't remember what a lunatic he is and they might go, hey, you know, I really don't like this Biden. Was Trump all that bad? I don't know. Maybe I'll vote for him. No, they need to know this man is a psycho and deserves to be nowhere near the White House. So I don't know. I don't I don't. That's why I'm of, of two minds. One, it was a disgusting spectacle. And how dare you, CNN, give him this platform? I mean, he needs to be called out on his lies. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to go into this any further. Um, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching and, um, take care and I'll talk to you again soon.